Hey everybody, Crystal Gamer here with something very out of the ordinary for my channel today. I'm doing this video because it has come to my attention that a couple of fellow YouTube creators do not know how to do audio processing. So today I am bringing you seven steps to quick and dirty audio processing in Audacity. Now, my first disclaimer though, before we begin, is that I am not an audio professional or anything even close to the sort. However, I have done hours and hours of research and reading into audio processing and I've watched a whole ton of videos on audio processing, etc., etc., etc. So, I feel pretty confident in bringing you this video that this should work pretty well for anyone Anyone that is not doing any audio processing right now or is trying to and really kind of has no idea what they're doing, this is going to make your audio sound a lot better, or at least it should make your audio sound a lot better. Now, the reason I'm calling it quick and dirty is because we are mostly going to be taking defaults here, but I just want to get you guys through the, the main workflow of getting some audio processing done. And if you guys want to, you know, go on from there and learn more about how to tweak, you can go from there. But let's get into the seven quick and dirty steps. And so, okay, so let's start with our track. We have, I have a track here that I have recorded. In most cases, when you have a track that you have recorded, it's probably going to look like a flat line. Most of you are, are probably pretty familiar with this. And so what you first want to do before you start anything, highlight the whole thing, which is just clicking on the left over here and then copy it. And you can either click this or you can do control C and then just go down here and either control V or click this paste button here. Either will work. Now mute this track here by clicking the mute button right here. You can rename it if you would like. If you click on audio track here, a, a window will pop up and you have the word name here. If you'd like to, you can rename it. I'm renaming mine backup. And now I'm going to collapse this window here by, by pressing this so that I don't even have to see it. I can just focus on this main window. So we have a backup in case anything happens. So that's step one. You're done with your backup in case anything happens that you need to get back to that you can. All right, so now we are gonna start with our actual processing here. So step two in our process, we're gonna highlight the whole track, click over here, highlight the whole thing so you, so you can see that it's colored, then click on effect and then amplify. And you're just gonna take this default and this default is gonna be different for you. It depends, it goes based on the peak volume of your recording. So just take the default for now and you are good with that. Now, once you take the default, you should start seeing some up and down waves here. You should see some stuff. Now, one thing that you'll, you'll notice on mine is I have some sort of dead air here and dead air here at the beginning and at the end. If you do not do this, start doing this. What you want is about five seconds or so, a little bit more, doesn't hurt, of ambient noise, just the noise in your room. And the reason that you want them is for noise reduction purposes. And so that is going to bring us into our next step. So now we're on step three. And what we're going to do is we're going to do noise reduction. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go to the, the start of this dead air section here and click on it and drag it all the way to the end. I'm going to highlight that whole thing. And once I have my ambient noise area highlighted, my, my portion where I wasn't talking, I'm going to click effect and then I'm going to go to noise reduction here. And in noise reduction, you will see a get noise profile button. And that's what you're going to click right now. And that window just disappears. It looks like nothing happened. It just disappears. Don't worry about it. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. Now, the next thing we do is we select our entire track again. So you want this entire thing highlighted. You do that by clicking over here. And then we go back up to effect. We click on no noise reduction again. Now I think I'm going to put that 12 in there. I think that these are the defaults. I think, I think, uh, go with the defaults, whatever the defaults are, just go with the defaults. Uh, I tend to move this around a little bit depending on what I'm doing, but for you guys, just select the defaults for now. Don't, don't play with it. Safer when you start just to select the defaults. So we're going to just click. Okay. And you see the whole thing kind of reduces down a little bit and you see the beginning and end of this. We almost have a flattened line. Now the ideal, 
is to have pretty much a flat line because that means all your, your background noise has reduced. However, you may be tempted to, you know, kind of go aggressive and up the numbers and everything. I'm going to tell you not to do that right now because what can happen is it can make your voice sound really tinny if you do, do too much noise reduction. So you, you want a little balance. If there is a slight hum in the background and your voice still sound rich, sounds rich, it's not that bad of a thing. However, if you, if you flatline this completely only to end up with your voice sounding really, really tinny, that's not so good. You don't really want that. I have, I do uh, background music in my videos, which means that if I have a very slight hum, I, no one can hear it because I have background music. Uh, so that's, that's a way to combat that if you can't, if you can't get this line down to nothing. Uh, for now, we're going to leave this though, and you're going to see why, because this is actually going to, uh, this is actually going to get to be thicker again as we progress. But we've done our initial noise reduction. We've taken the defaults. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go back into effect. Oh, I'm sorry. Select the whole track again. Don't make that mistake. Make sure you have the track selected. So click on the left, make sure the whole track is selected. Go back to effect again. We're going to go back into amplify. And on this new peak amplitude here, type in minus four. And so we're reducing the whole thing down and we're, we're doing that just to give it some, some headroom um, on both ends so that when we do the next couple of steps, it doesn't start to clip and all of that. Or if it does, the, the clipping doesn't really affect much of anything. So now our track is still selected. We can keep that selected. Click back on effect again and we're going to go to the next step and that's equalization. We're going to click on equalization here and there are two areas that I want you to pay attention to. On the select curve down here, there's a bass boost and there's a treble boost. I want you to first go into the bass boost and just go with the default. It should look something like this here. And if it doesn't look like this, you, you could possibly be looking at something like this on the graphic. It, there's the draw version and the graphic version. They look slightly different, very similar. It, it doesn't matter. It's just, a, it's just a different appearance, but that's essentially the same thing. So. The thing that you want to do in here though is you want to go to select curve, bass boost, click OK. It does your bass boost. Keep the entire track selected, go back to effect, back to equalization, select curve, click on treble boost. We have this line here and if you're in the graphic view it'll look something like that. It's essentially the same thing. Just make sure your treble boost is selected, click OK. Treble boost has taken effect. Keep the entire track highlighted, back to effect yet again. We spend a lot of time in effect here. This time we're going to click on a compressor. Accept the defaults in here. If, if yours looks different from this, if you, if you think that you've played with it at any point in time, just go to Manage, Factory Presets, Defaults, and it'll automatically set everything to defaults in here. You're going to click OK. So now you're, you've done your compression. Next step after that, guess what? Keep it selected, go back into effect. Now you're gonna click limiter. In here, make sure that this says minus four and your hold is 10, if it doesn't already. This, you can, just so you're aware, you can limit anywhere between three and six is good. I tend to go with a four limit and what this is, just really briefly, when you play your audio back, you'll notice that up here there's a bar and as your audio is playing back, it'll go green and it, it then goes orange when it gets up in here and it'll go red when it gets up in here. Red hurts the listener's ears. You don't want it to get up in here. So you want it either somewhere between three and six. You don't want it to hit that red. That's what this limiter does. It prevents you from going into that red zone without negatively affecting the rest of your your voice track so without reducing the rest of your voice track down and losing volume in low volume areas so that's what this limiter does between three and six is is good here i typically go for four so all right so now we have gone through those are all of our steps believe it or not we have covered our seven quick and dirty steps for processing now i mentioned to you that this line was probably going to get thicker there's an eighth step if you want to apply it. What I would suggest that you do, and the, the eighth step is to reapply noise reduction again, but what I would suggest that you do is listen to your track first, see how it sounds, try applying noise reduction again, and if it sounds too tinny, don't do it. But if you want to apply noise reduction again, remember we, we select that 
that ambient noise area, we click Effect, Noise Reduction, Get Noise Profile, then select the entire track, Effect, Noise Reduction, and OK. Accept the defaults. And you see here, I have a very, very thin line. It's, it's pretty much just a line, which is good. Barring this, this is probably me maybe hitting the space bar or hitting a key on my keyboard or something. That's probably what that is. And that stuff I cut out anyway. But I would test my voice quality here and make sure that I like it before keeping that noise reduction. And if you want to get more advanced in this, you know, play with the equalization, play with that bass boost and move it around, play with the treble boost, move it around, play with the compression settings and move those around and, and test your voice quality every time you play with it. You have a backup, so you can always go with that. And it's very easy. Audacity makes it extremely easy just to click undo. And I can basically undo back to the beginning. It's just good for to have a backup when you start doing this. And then over time, maybe you don't you don't need to, but it's it's always good to have a backup when you start. So, OK, so that's your seven quick and dirty steps for audio processing. And I hope all of these things have helped a few of you. And if they have helped you, please do hit that like button down below. And if you are not familiar with my channel, please do take a look around. And if you like the content, please do subscribe. It helps to support us YouTubers quite a bit. And I would appreciate it a whole bunch. Thank you all for joining me today. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye now.